historic Grove Hill home built in 1850s, for sale. A historic Grove Hill landmark residence is on the market. The Coat Wilson Bumpers home on Du Bose Avenue likely dates to the mid-1850s. It was last owned by Marion Bumpy Bumpers, a retired educator, who died June 5th at the age of 93. She left the house and other properties to Auburn University, and her will specifies that the Martha and Doc Bumpers Agricultural Center, so named for her late parents, be built on what she called a farm on the Allen Walker Road in the Hell Western community as a memorial to them. The idea is that the county extension office, possibly other ag-related offices, and a space for meetings and or livestock events be built. Bumpers purchased the home in 1991 when she returned to her native Grove Hill to live after a long teaching career in Montgomery. She and her mother, Mrs. R.A. Bumpers, lived there until her mother died and then Bumpy Bumpers continued living there until just days before her death. The house is a board and batten construction, common for the era. It has wide front and back porches. There is a living room, dining area, kitchen, three bedrooms and three and a half baths. Central air and heat service the house. It has a tin roof and an exterior carport of newer vintage. The large lot, 145 feet by 201 feet, is filled with camellias and other southern flowers and plants. The view from the front porch is uniquely southern. The high school is directly across the street and in one direction the football stadium. In the other, the local public library and the Baptist and Methodist churches are visible. It is all within walking distance as is the historic downtown. Sitting on the porch you can listen to the melodious chimes of the Baptist church ringing out on an hourly basis. John Cote bought property in 1853. John A. Cote purchased the property where the house is located in 1853. The parcel was just outside the platted limits of the village of Macon, now Grove Hill. Cote had lived near Clarksville, west of Grove Hill, where the county seat was being moved to Grove Hill in 1832. The first courts in Clarksville were held in the home of John Cote's father, William, until a courthouse was built nearby. John Cote was an early county politician and would serve various times as justice of the peace, coroner and sheriff. He likely opted to move to Grove Hill because of his political involvements. A specific construction date isn't known, but it was likely around 1854 or 1855 by its building style, according to Robert Gamble, an architectural historian well-versed on Alabama architecture. The home has a spraddle roof design that suggests it could be much earlier than the 1850s, but Gamble said the style remained popular in rural areas into the 1850s and 1860s. Other features of the house suggest an 1850s vintage. Coates didn't enjoy the home long. He died in 1863 at the age of 54 of typhoid fever. Wilson family owned home for 102 years. The house and 17 acres were sold to Judge John Jack Roper Wilson Jr. in 1869 and would remain in that family for 102 years. Jack Wilson was from a prominent Clark County family. In 1868, he ran on what was called the Radical Ticket and was elected probate judge with the aid of a sizable newly enfranchised black vote in the first years of Reconstruction after the Civil War. Most white voters protested the new ways and didn't vote. John Marshall Wilson, who had clerked for his father in the probate office, succeeded his father as judge in 1880 and would serve until 1904. The father and son would serve a combined 36 years in the office. Ironically, by the time the younger Wilson came along, the Democrats were back in power and he was elected under that party's banner. The Wilson family was quite prominent. Massey Wilson, another of Jack's sons, would be a delegate to the Alabama Constitutional Convention of 1901 and would later be elected the state's attorney general. After that, he entered private law practice with a younger partner, Thomas Martin, representing the new Alabama Power Company. Wilson would go to St. Louis to try and help his brother, Edward P. Wilson, with a struggling insurance company. The company would fail in the 1930s and both Wilsons returned to Alabama. Massey Wilson would live out his days in the home of his wife in Wilcox County and was never a rich man. Thomas Martin, on the other hand, who continued representing Alabama Power would go on to be president of the company and an influential and powerful man in Alabama business circles. Edward Wilson would marry Julia Turner of St. Stephen's and practice law there with his father-in-law. He also served as a delegate to the 1901 Constitutional Convention, he from Washington County while his brother Massey represented Clark. 
he moved to St. Louis to represent an insurance company. The company failed in the 1930s and he would eventually make his way back to the old family home in Grove Hill to help care for his sister, Sally, who had never married. In Grove Hill, he practiced law and served as mayor. In 1940, he developed the land around the home into the Wilson subdivision. Many lots were sold and new homes built. Aunt Sally's House Sally died in 1944 and Edward in 1945. In her later years, Sally lived in the east wing of the house, which had a separate entrance, and it was often referenced as Aunt Sally's house. His widow, Julia, continued to live in the house until her death in 1968. In 1971, it was sold to John and O'Reilly Laidlaw, who used the house as a second home. Laidlaw worked for a highway bridge construction company and would later own the company. A friend, Hodo Pruitt, who worked for the Alabama Highway Department, talked Laidlaw into purchasing the Wilson home. Residence was longtime social and cultural center. An article in the Clark County Historical Society Quarterly, Summer 1998, stated, During the 102 years of Wilson's ownership, the house was one of the social and cultural centers of the town of Grove Hill and of Clark County. Many prominent Grove Hillians who were not members of the Wilson family also lived in the house, for the Wilsons rented out the west wing of the house from time to time. This included to the Carlton family where George Carlton Jr., longtime editor and publisher of the Clark County Democrat, was born in 1889 and to David and Emma Matthews. Matthews was an educator, superintendent of education, and legislator. The late Matthews is also known as one of the county's most knowledgeable historians. The late laws did extensive renovations and so did bumpers after she bought the house. She also carries on the Wilson tradition of enjoying the house as a social and cultural center of Grove Hill and the county, the Historical Society's quarterly article noted. Who will be Historic Homes' next owner? Now the house awaits a new owner as its 166-year-old life continues. As the quarterly article concluded, it mellows and gracefully ages as it approaches the brink of a new era in the 21st century. The house is listed for $134,000. Contact Joe Skipper at Skipper Insurance and Realty for more information or to make an appointment to see. Skipper can be reached at 251-769-8044. Information for this article came from the summer 1998 issue of the Clark County Historical Society Quarterly.